So the last effort before the pause, I hope uh, you will be able, yes, it's working. So uh, I'm going to start with different uh, problems that requires uh, some kind of collaboration to APIs. And then I will go to a bigger picture. But first, I will introduce the usual supply chain. Really simple, one link after another. And then what we used to have, and we still have, is EDI, electronic data interchange. The, the only thing is, it's like a mail, but uh, you have a proof of delivery with the, the email. So we worked like that, and we, it worked not so badly, but it works very well in one-to-one -one or one-to-many. When you are in a network, it's a bit more difficult. And we are now, and we had some examples um, in the previous uh, speeches, uh, on the on-demand is clearly um, a network, a many-to-many -many, um, oper operation network. So, um, so in our new logistics organization, and as shown by Dibishenko as well, we have already a lot of shared resources, shared operations. So it means from, an, from a developer point of view that you need a lot of interfaces because all the players, they have different systems. And these systems, need to, they need to be uh, connected together. So here we have some challenge already. It's, it's, it's also a business, frankly. Uh, and uh, some people made a lot of money out of it. But what is uh, new now is that we have an innovation rate that is higher than ever. So the time you build an, in an interface, <laughs> it's, it's obsolete. So you need something more dynamic, more plug and play. Uh, it's also the fact that you have more and more uh, collaborations, so the number of interfaces is increasing. And uh, hopefully we have already some API catalogs in logistics, and the next step will be some new applications, and new applications that will require a lot of coordination. So just to give you an example, if you take a simple truck, full or not, it's another question, <laughs> But if you take a simple truck, you, have, you can have around the truck a lot of players for a single destination, for truck and trace, for booking, uh, for, uh, for the agenda, for um, a lot of different applications. So what are the different scenarios? The one we know, it's mostly everything in silos. So, like the walls that we, we saw a few minutes ago. I know another, even more traditional way to do coordination, and they do it with postal offices. It's Universal Postal Union. You put a letter somewhere, it goes to the other side of the world, no question asked. But then you have to go through the United Nations bureaucracy. So in terms of agility, could be better. Then there is the Californian way. Uh, the winner takes all. Uh, not sure is that what we want. So we, we, the, the, the question we just had before uh, raised the, the concern. And uh, the last way is, of course, <laughs> you can guess, the way we're going to investigate is the interconnection of logistic systems. I'm going to take a small example if we want to do some kind of slot booking to offload uh, a truck. What we usually have is phone, mail, uh, fax. We, we still do that in logistics, believe me. <laughs> and when you are just in a one-one relationship, it's not that difficult. But just here, I mentioned another thing. We focused a lot on empty trips and fill rate. But when you look here, waiting time on the 24 hours, it's 17% of the day. So in terms of stakes, it's quite high. If you could avoid with a better synchronization between the offer and the demand, if there is a better synchronization to offload or load the truck. What we have now is a lot of softwares that allows, the software allow, the software they allow 
the, um, the booking. But for the carrier or the logistics service provider, it could be a nightmare. Because then you have a lot of providers, there is a competition, there are different offers, and then you have to switch from one screen to another. Of course, as soon as you are able to book something somewhere, the last thing you want to do is to cancel the booking. So the optimization is really hard to do so far. So with GS1, we're working on another concept, which is a connector that will connect different booking platforms together. And for that, we need, of course, APIs to uh, transfer the booking information without disclosing uh, some sensitive data, like uh, who is the editor of the software on the counterpart. You don't want to disclose that kind of commercial information and others. So for us, the API technologies are really great tools to enable co collaboration in a better way than what we do so far. But let's go to another example. This one is a bit uh, more, maybe more difficult to understand, but I try to make it simple. Imagine a world where you have different hubs or distribution centers or whatever. Here you start from zero, and in zero you have already a truck that is inbound to up zero with request three and request four to loads, two loads, and with two destinations. And in the meanwhile, you say, hey, maybe it's not the best solution, but maybe it's not optimized. So here in the up zero, we can have a web platform looking from different capacity, looking from different price, different loads, without disclosing everything. And here you have other requests, and you can find out in that particular location that it's better to switch some loads from the blue truck to other trucks and switch part of the load in the blue truck to a yellow truck. So we do some kind of switching loads to optimize uh, the fill rates without uh, jeopardizing the uh, commitment uh, from the shipper. So, and it allows better revenue, and I think that for um, carriers, it's, uh, <laughs> it's something very welcome. So, we have a lot of subjects. I won't go through all of the subjects, but you can imagine every time we put carriers, shippers all together, a lot of interfaces, some data need to be shared, and, de and then in the back, huge stakes. If we are able to increase just by 1%, the fill rate of all trucks, it's, it's quite a big deal. 1% more fill rate of all trucks in Europe, it's 2 billion per year that could be saved. Not to mention the environmental footprint. So it's really huge, but tough problem. So we did some simulation. What if this concept could be applied on a larger scale? So decentralized optimization everywhere but applied on a large scale. And we found out some quite um, big numbers. Uh, loss of capacity divided by two, CO2 emissions, inventory divided by three, things like that. But to achieve that, it's not only information and technology. We need also to change how physical things are done. And for that, whoops. For that, uh, we explored the c concept and we founded with a few colleagues the concept of the physical internet. Th I think for you that are in the IT, the internet, I won't tell you what it is <laughs> because uh, <laughs> I'm not the expert. But the main idea is the interconnection of heterogeneous networks. In logistics, we have a lot of different networks. So a physical internet or logistics internet would be the interconnection of all logistics services. How to seamlessly interconnect all logistics services. And the idea, of course, is to have more shared resources, but still in a decentralized manner. No centralized authority. So we went to that idea. We had a couple of publications, and we, we ran a big simulation 
on France with uh, flows coming from uh, retailers and suppliers. And uh, here is what they deal with. So the optimization, the synchronization of flows over France, good luck. But here on the, sec on the, on the right side, you have a network that serves exactly the same demand. But what we do, instead of running a lot of trucks, not always full, we consolidate as soon as we can. So we transship and we consolidate every time and we optimize every time at each node. It's like packet switching, instead that we don't have the internet algorithm. TCP IP doesn't work at all for logistics. You know, I, I, will not nev I will never throw away packets. Oh, this one too late. Let's, <laughs> let's throw it away and take another one. No. So it's the concept, not the algorithms. Okay? So we developed new algorithms for that. And for that, we think if it's really live and we have some kind of generalization, then we could have real uh, gains. The, other point is, you know, in the physical world, we have to deal with physical objects. And when we look at ports, in the past, they already achieved a great improvement when they put everything in the standardized box, like a packet, you know? And the standardization could be seen as a constraint, but in fact, it helps to create potential when it's well uh, done. So what we would like to achieve is to have, instead of, this is my sidewalk in Paris, so you see sometimes some, some goods on pallets on the, on the sidewalk, we'd like to have a set of modular boxes that will ease transshipment and would ease the fact that the switching from one provider to another in routers, okay? So it's not only about boxes, but it's also about handling, and here you have a prototype in Germany where you can do some uh, kind of switching uh, and much more compact than what we have today. And the software in each piece is the same. And they coordinate between themselves. So they have already, I think, inside some kind of APIs to talk to their neighbors <laughs> and decide what to do. And of course, because of that, it's really uh, scalable. So if I... Um, go back to IT architecture. You have to realize, if you're not in the field, that in logistics we are still a very, um, not middle-aged, but uh, not so advanced that what we see in B2C or with apps on, on, on phones. We still rely on legacy systems and we still are with ERP and most of the objects that we have are not smart at all. And most of them, they are not even connected. It's getting better now. Trucks are connected in many ways. Sometimes even too connected for the driver because they have different screens with the different applications, which is another issue. And but we're gonna have pretty pretty soon um, much more connected objects. So the main question is how we're gonna unleash the potential of doing a smarter logistics with a more accurate view on uh, what's going on at the operation level and for the planning. So we, s we can have smart boxes and we worked already on some prototypes. We, uh, the Internet of Things will help a lot to capture the information and then to publish it. And on top of that, we need to have some kind of vocabulary. We discussed that this morning, which is really crucial so they could understand each other. And, of course, software as a service and things like that. So, we are really in the middle of something. So, the physical internet, we have four components, four major components. We have a physical uh, domain that is fundamental to ease the transshipment. The biggest impact of container is not on the ship. You know, the big container ships, it's not the biggest impact. The biggest impact is the crane. The crane divided the cost by more than 10. So when you do that, the trade-off between running an empty truck and do a stop and do some consolidation drastically change. Okay? So for that, we need to work on handling, not very sexy, but quite important. 
uh, information for us is really cru crucial because when you have some kind of open network, it means that if you l lose the, the information, everything is lost. So you really rely on information instead of just a contract with a some contractor, with a logistics service provider, okay? So we need to put it on a new level. Processes, we work on different algorithms to see what is the potential. It's not just doing things like we do it today, it's also a whole new world. I'll give you an example. When you have such a network, you can think about decentralized inventory. Instead of having all my goods in a centralized warehouse, I can spread the product, as a manufacturer, I can spread the product over a country and then reallocate according to the needs. And with that, I'm going to reduce the pressure on transportation. Okay? So it's really a new mindset. And the last point is the legal one. How are we going to, the governance, how are we going to manage that? And uh, we had some discussion about that uh, in Graz. So it's not completely new. Things, because the idea is coming from a few years ago now, but we have already startups really aligned with the idea or claiming uh, implementing uh, the idea uh, about um, stock as a service um, or even a sub network. Even if you think about Amazon, Amazon could be seen as a winner takes all. But Amazon also now sells logistics for itself. You don't have to put your product on the marketplace. You can just use them as a distribution network. And you connect them with your own distribution network. So, but of course, with Amazon, it's always a bit the Amazon way. So you have to be between the forks uh, <laughs> to make it work. Uh, but you have other um, companies. And I, we think, and if I come back to the connector, there is a room for neutral uh, third party like GS1 to host some data and to host some connectors because they are trusted third party. Uh, so they will be, be part of it. In France, we talked about fill rates. We, had a start, we have a startup. We started last year, and within a year, they opened seven routing center in France, pallet-based, soon with uh, swap boxes. And they were able to have, on an average uh, level, 87% fill rate. So it's very small so far, but if we are able to scale it, you see the, you see the challenge. So, how to do something where um, there is, if you look at European level, there is a European, a European technical um, platform, name is Alice, not Wonderland, not yet, but Alice. Uh, and there, you're going to find around 100 companies and more working on the roadmap, looking at the subjects, and of course, there is clearly an IT um, subject there. One of the main axes is IT development to make it happen. It's not the only one, but it's really an important one. And so, our uh, conclusion is we think we have a golden age for APs in logistics just ahead of us. Thank you very much. Time for two questions. So you can fail the first one. Before we melt. Yeah, before we melt. Yeah, no question here. So I have, I have one question for you. So, you know, on the internet, we can lose packets, we can erase packets, transferring packets is zero cost, right? Um, I, and you said the crane was the major cost reducer, right? Uh, on container ship? On ma maritime containers. Yeah, maritime containers. So today, with the prototype you are making, up to which price you can make like the, 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 the packet transfer to your mind? Per, it's what, it's per kilo, per parcel? Uh, it, it, you know, in, in logistics, you have two different sizes, so it's uh, really difficult to, to give one price. But the target 
is really to divide by three or four, two or three minimum to start with. And then, of course, the cost structure will change if you go uh, to a bigger scale. But to start with, divide handling cost by two or three is our target. Yeah. So but we, we don't need that to start. Uh, CRC, they start without uh, new handling devices, just because they are there to connect the flows and uh, from uh, and, and not full trucks. And so to your mind, because we have someone uh, coming later talking about open source uh, self-autonomous vehicles, right? But to your mind, what will be the, the next major re price reduction? Logistics, handling, and decentralizing logistics, or auto make, making a, like autonomous cars or autonomous uh, trucks, uh, so replacing okay. humans by software? So, uh, autonomous trucks or AGVs in plants, we, we, we know that in plants already. Of course, they reduce cost because then you don't have to pay a driver. So there is clearly a cost reduction when you switch to um, um, an automated truck. But for me, if you look at the numbers, 20%, 25% of empty trips, half full or half empty the way you, you want. Uh, the challenges are much more on the efficiency side than the technology. The technology, we're going to grab it anyway. It's a, we're going to have it, it's nice to have, but it won't solve the big issue. If we just um, uh, switch to a better technology from transportation mean point of view, it's nice to have but it won't solve the major issue which is from my mind the lack of efficiency and the overcapacity that we have uh, in this business. Okay. Yeah. One more question here. Thank you, Eric. Um, from the scientist uh, perspective, uh, do you think that the, the model that you present would be applicable for the reverse logistic? as well? When everything is interconnected, there is no direct or reverse logistics. Uh, it's like uh, there is no real uh, direction in, in, on the internet. You <laughs> just send the packet both ways. So for us, it's not really an issue. And what I uh, would like to uh, let you think about is uh, what could be a physical internet access provider uh, in Paris, for instance, what could it bring to the city, or a few of them, what could it bring? Because nowadays we don't have access to logisticians as consumers. We are just consignees. The customer is the shipper. And this is why when it, the, 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 the carrier knocks, or the, the, the guy knocks my door, I'm never there. And he, he will never know. I like it. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.